All right. Welcome back. Uh, today we are in Jordan. Um, and uh, as you can probably gauge from the uh, title of the video, we're going to try to find Arrakis. Really hope my flight instructor isn't watching this. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm, I love Dune. I love the movie. I love the book. Um, I think it's one of the greatest science fiction stories ever told, as most people do who uh, have read the book or seen any of the movies, even the one with Sting. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, whenever I see a really good movie, I think to myself, you know, like, I want to see those locations in real life. And it just so happens that when you try to find that information on this movie, uh, you end up essentially... Let me trim out real quick. Yeah, you end up essentially uh, finding yourself in this region, Wadi Room, the National Park area, or Nature Reserve, or whatever it is, um... Uh, but not entirely uh, aware of the exact location uh, that they filmed certain things. So, in between um, flights to complete the VR world tour that I've been doing, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, I've been looking for the filming locations for this movie based upon um, some of the... Uh, uh, stills and footage from the movie itself try and get like a clear picture of where it possibly is um, I really hope we get there this time I've had internet cut out on me twice uh, because Texas has for the last couple months been Arrakis we've had a 120 degrees what, real feels like 120 degrees, something like that. You go get in your car after getting out of work. Car says 120. You get home, it says 108. Just bad. It's been super dry, no rain. But it suddenly rained today, and uh, so all of like the Texas power grid and the rain and the uh, internet service provider stuff is just like crapping the bed. Um, yeah, so if anybody who, uh, worked on the, like, actual production of this movie wants to verify that this is the right, uh, right place, that would be great. Um, I'm sure we'll have a lot more information on it later on. When the uh, Dune Part 2 comes out, I think November 3rd. Um, I'm personally looking forward to the uh, Ornithopter dropping on the same date for the Dune DLC in this game. I will be flying the heck out of that. Alright, just after this is when our internet started crapping. Flop. Um. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure that this is the correct location for some things. Uh, I do know that I'm in the right ballpark because the geography lines up. But you know, I'd love to have somebody's like official opinion. I don't think it's a closely guarded secret of any kind because. Um, you know, they, they actually did say it was this region of Jordan. Um, yeah. So, um, I have been diligently flying the world tour, um, 
I think the last video that I posted was into Cape Town. It might have been out of Cape Town. No, I think it was Jerusalem to Cape Town, yeah. Um, but since then, I mean, our our baby baby boy F-16 is in uh, Key West. <laughs> so, I mean, we've conquered all of Europe, taken the northern route across to uh, Iceland and Greenland, and then down into uh, Goose Bay and all the east coast of the United States, so... Um, my brother actually joined me for some of that flight, so, uh, that's going to be fun. But, unfortunately, I've kind of dug myself into a hole because, um, to, you know, as much as I would love to put those videos on YouTube, uh, each of them is, like, at this point, two gigs I think something like that and we're at like 15 or 20 different flights <laughs> so there's a lot of footage and I would love to remove it from my computer but that would require I mean each video takes about a day to make because there's just so much footage hours upon hours upon hours of flying like 20 hours I'm like 20 hours behind, at least. So I've told myself, no more flying the world tour until I have actually caught up with myself. Unfortunately, Starfield comes out in two weeks. Uh, I'm working on a cosplay for an anime convention here. Uh, <laughs> that will take up the rest of those two weeks. And then, you know, September's gone because Starfield. October is Fable, I think. Plus an Eclipse. So, I'm going to be busy for a while. And I may not actually be caught up with that stupid world tour until a year after I started it. So, we'll see. I may be wrong. I'm also working on something for uh, for flying, actually. Uh, my brother and I are designing a... We kind of hacked apart a Logitech joystick and a throttle quadrant. And I'm actually uh, designing and 3D printing my own... Uh, collective and cyclic and pedals so that I can uh, fly more realistically I guess instead of having the joystick to the right which I currently do and the throttle quadrant to the left in reverse acting as a collective uh, I'm going to have <laughs> give me a second I guess I could just turn off the radios, couldn't I? I should probably get out of here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have... <sighs> yeah, we're gonna have a uh, collective in the middle. Um, I'm sorry, collective on the side. Kind of like this, actually. With a bunch of switches on it and a actual rotating throttle um and then a uh cyclic in the middle like this basically except it's going to be from the top not from the bottom um i'm not sure that makes sense uh, i'm used to flying the uh, r22 so the same kind of control setup as the r22 if you can imagine that Even the pedals are pretty, pretty similar. <laughs> so I'm used to flying. Okay, so having flown this route a couple times now, um, once with the terrain turned down really bad because of internet connection and once because of 
uh, looking for this the first time. Um, I know for a fact that that mountain bridge right there is kind of what we're aiming for. We're going to aim for the right side of it. Is that for us? I don't think so. No. Yeah, I've flown around here quite a lot. I uh, first came here in the F-16, decided to do... I heard that it was in Jordan, so I made the mistake of starting in Jerusalem, heading north, and then kind of skirting around the uh, eastern side of Jordan until I got to this point. But um, it was the F-16, so it wasn't that much, <laughs> it wasn't that much flight time. Um, and I thought it'd be really simple, but when I got here, you can see... Uh, it's probably not very obvious where where they filmed any of this. So there's also conflicting data. Um, I did see a map of concept art for um, for this region and. Uh, like where they thought Arrakis should be and all that stuff. But um, if I remember correctly, on the other side of this ridge is where where the spaceport was marked. Excuse me. Um, I actually now, now that I've flown this a lot more and I've seen more of the movie... Uh, I actually think it's closer to, like, those flat plains over there. Might be where the spaceport is. Especially the path. Like, this waypoint says Fremen. That's where I think the Fremen were standing on the ridge line when the Ornithopters went over. And it overlooks the location that I think Arakeem was in. Um, which... Gone. Flying! Yeah, I think the spaceport should be over here. I would love to come here in real life. I bet it's fun hiking these hills. But I bet you it's hot. I'm used to it by now, but <laughs> definitely wasn't for a long time. Just bring tons of water. Being in a helicopter probably makes it better. Hmm. With AC, most likely. You know what? I never opened these windows. I had them open once. There we go. Now I can hear the helicopter. My one complaint about the, uh, Flying in the uh, Cabri G2. I think it might be the audio technically that I have. Uh, only for like headset quality audio. But I can't hear the Cabri G2 at all when I'm flying it. Imagine living there. There's also a supposedly a resort that they all stayed at and just flew out from every day. I have no idea where it is. I haven't even bothered to look it up, so... Most likely that's on me. As you can see, I've flown this recently enough that I haven't deleted it from my flight log. Um, and that was actually my last flight over here because the uh, internet cut out 
way before here. But we are essentially here. Link. And there you go. Should be houses down there somewhere. They're there. And there it is. So I'm going to use my mouse actually. But. This, I think, is where Arrakis was. Or Arakeen, I mean, because this is all Arrakis. But uh, the palace would be, like, right there. The shield wall is, like, here. And the point that the Fremen were standing on was, like, right over here. So we're going to head over there so you can get the viewpoint and I can actually compare it directly. But that's definitely it. It matches all of it. The ridge line specifically has like the 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 profile of the mountain. And the way that it folds. And the way that these two hills are set up. And that line right there. It all matches. But we're gonna slow down really quick. Pull out our trim. Go into an out of ground effect hover a little bit. And then scooch forward until we can make out the actual area. And I think they were actually standing closer to there because of the way this is set up, but, or maybe it's down here. I actually don't know. But yeah, so this is pretty much it. I mean, it doesn't look as flat as it does on the movie, but movie magic, you know? Let's go to get a closer look, huh? So I think the ornithopters actually flew over this towards Arakeen. And uh, it's interesting because this city, the city that uh, is in the book at least, Arakeen, um, is stated to be like the biggest city in all of human history. But I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> This region right here, within the supposed shield wall, uh, is definitely not as big as that. That village is, could fit about there. Maybe maybe two or three villages. So yeah, um, the auto turrets or whatever they're called, I can't remember, will probably be about here-ish. Shield wall is, extends from that... Uh, outcrop to that and that and all the way over there and then uh, like I said the palace would be all the way back here I'll fly to where the palace is but uh, that's essentially it so right now we would be over the city
But like I said, if anybody who has actually worked on this movie could verify that this is the real location, that would make me super happy. Um, obviously, it's not required, because I'm pretty sure this is the right place. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you want to pipe in, I'd be glad to hear from you. Though the chances of any of those wonderful people seeing this video is awfully small, so... But yeah, the palace would be probably right about there. We're gonna land in those shrubs. So we can get a sense of the scale of this region. We kind of make this an aggressive turn, too. Just to get us down. Why not? We'll pop up on top of the ridge right here instead of the shrubs. That way we can have a better view. Did I actually fly past it? Yeah. No, it's back here. Is there a ridge we can land on? Yeah, let's just land over here. Why not? Who cares? It's not like any of this is very well uh, drawn out. I would love if some modder came in and just plopped Arakeen right here so that when we do get the ornithopters we can play around now as far as the um, location of the spaceport um, in the books I think it's like 10 kilometers 10 miles something like that from the uh, from the city and considering this is 1.7 miles, 10 miles, it'd probably be over here-ish. Right? Because that's about 2, about 4, about 6, about 8 by 10. So, we'll fly over here. And then head back. See what we find. That's the only... My only guess is that it's that way because of the Fremen outlook, so. Anyway. Let's go! Cool. Don't judge me. Please don't judge me. Oh, not bad. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you can judge a little bit if you want. Also, cool thing. I don't know if anybody's uh, interested in this or not besides me, but uh, when they were filming this movie... Because, uh, Denis, Denis, is that his name? Denny? Denny Villanueva, Villanueva, I'm so sorry, sir, if, <laughs> if that's the case. I've heard people pronounce your name, but it's been a while. So, um, but anyway, the director, we'll call him that, the director, when he decided to, uh, make this movie decided practical effects were probably best and one of those things was um, whenever they needed to film an ornithopter they film a helicopter and then just go over it again with the CG to make it look like a actual ornithopter and that way you get all the brownouts and uh, the correct flight behavior of the of the aircraft without even trying so we are pre-CG flying the ornithopter. <laughs> now, I do not feel like flying over mountains anymore, so... We're actually going to come down here. I'm going to throw on some trim again, and we're going to follow the desert floor all the way to our intended destination. Which I'm guessing is about rendered into the arrow at this point. Yeah, and if we're thinking practically, 
this is probably the route that they would take with the ornithopters anyway, because um, as a helicopter pilot, you kind of want to avoid exotic uh, wind generation that's caused by terrain like changes like that, right? You, if you go over a really strange hill that is catching the wind in just the right way, you get wind shear out the ass. So it's always best to avoid those things if you can, even if it makes your flight longer. If you have the option, that is. Maybe that's the resort. I really should Google this. Just so I can pretend that I was the pilot on the film set for a day. Yes, sir. Where would you like to go? To the desert. Understood. We're already there. Oh, you want me to fly to that part of the desert? You got it. Let's go. You want me to land in this specific spot and pretend I'm an ornithopter? You got it. I'll do it. Let's go. 100%. I'm there. We are... A little off of where we were supposed to go. I actually wonder I don't know the answer to this so someone can probably like tell me the answer <laughs> but I always wondered like how it works flying aircraft like inside like lower than a thousand feet inside of a national park like this like a natural reserve a nature reserve of some kind because you have to be disturbing some of the uh some of the landscape, right? All the local wildlife. If there is any out here. Besides uh, Muad'Dib. And the sandworms. I actually wonder um, a couple things, actually. <laughs> now that we're on our way to uh, some place that may or may not exist. Um, when they release... They're like sheep. When they release the uh, DLC, are they planning on using this region as a basis for Arrakis? Like, is if the borders of the mission were not set, could you technically fly the Ornithopter out of here and make it back to the airport over there or something? Um, or is it going to be like a separate world? Or, um, you know, like, for example, I don't think Arrakis had that much greenery on it, uh, at least not as abundantly. So that stuff is going to have to go. But are they going to leave it in? Who knows? Second question. Um, will Arakeen be to scale? Will the map of Arrakis be a scale? Like, when we fly into Arrakeen, is it going to be the actual size of what it is here in the real world, where we just were, or, like, the size of an actual, like, I don't know, um, actual large city? This looks more like a good area for the, uh, for the spaceport, I'm not gonna lie. Um, third question: Are they gonna have sandworms, and what are they gonna look like? Be able to see worm signs? That'd be sick. Be sick. Uh, maybe we should fly actually to the um to the part of this region that they used for um, the 
uh, spice harvester scene at the beginning of the movie. Well, not the beginning, but. Yeah, the problem with this whole air region is that none of this is flat, flat. It's all this, like. I don't know if this is actually flat or if it's like. I want to go over there, but we should continue this way. This is about 10 miles. 10 nautical miles, at least. Man, it is beautiful out here, though. You really should come fly out here if you have a chance. VR, if possible. This actually looks a lot more spaceporty. I believe there's an airport up here somewhere, isn't there? Yes. Convenient. So maybe this... I don't think we're 10 miles away at this point. I think we're more like 15 or 20. But... I mean, if I were to design a... Uh, a spaceport... With a lot of room... I would certainly choose this part. Come to think of it, this airport is a lot closer than the, the uh, King Hussein International, so I wonder if they used this road port to actually get stuff there. Because, like, if you think about it logistically, right, you have to take all your film equipment from the cargo transport, you know, be it plane or boat or however you got it here, most likely plane, um, unload it, put it in a truck, drive it to a place, or fly it in one way or another. Um, however, flying things cost money, a lot of money. So is driving things, but, you know, if you wanted to cut cost on flying things, you could drive it a certain way, fly it the rest of the way. And so it's possible that they drove it up to al Kuwair from King Hussein. I mean, I'm just guessing at this point, I guess, but... I would personally, if it was closer to that airport, it might be cheaper to drive it up there, drive the film equipment up there, and then fly it the rest of the way. You could also be a resort. And since I've flown here before, I know that those two buildings over there that look like they're on the road are actually the airport, so... It's not literally an airport. As you'll see, they use the highway. And you kind of just land on it. We don't need to because we're helicopter, but... If you were a fixed wing, sure. And we are actually close enough that we could go take a look up at the other stuff. Okay. Ugh. Well, we made it to where I would film a spaceport. And it's kind of on the way. Let's go back. I really don't want to do this, but... Let's fly this direction. I think this... I think this area is where they filmed the other part of it. I don't really know. I haven't looked. Get us situated on the runway. And then go. So 
See, it, it's even marked strangely. Like... And then, at some point, it stops becoming the, the highway markings. It starts becoming highway. Right there. Just odd. If it goes faster than... 120, I'll fly that everywhere. Obviously not long distance, but... I can't even tell you how much I am looking forward to that aircraft. I've always wondered what it would be like to fly an ornithopter. Especially one that kind of uh, resembles a dragonfly. You know, because there's tons of different types of ornithopters, but... The dragonfly is such an interesting creature. And its flight characteristics are no exception. It is... Uh, I believe there's a Smarter Every Day video that actually covers that. I think the other thing that appeals to me about flying for a movie studio, a like a film studio of some kind, uh, is that you would probably get to fly in a lot of weird locations. Not only that, but then you'd have to have a license for like flying in different regions. You'd have to be up to date on your... European, uh, you know, qualifications and your American qualifications and whatever, you know, unless of course you know it's an American helicopter, in which case you can just keep your American license. I think is that not the way it works? If it's an American aircraft, you can fly. I know this; it's that's how it is in Japan, at least. If you fly an American aircraft, you can fly in Japan. If you have an American license, I mean, but if you uh, want to fly a Japanese aircraft like a, a plane that was registered in Japan you have to get a Japanese license I believe we're passing over a border to get here it would have been a lot faster in the F-16 that's for sure Okay, well. Welcome back. I uh, I didn't bother keeping any of the footage for uh, any of the stuff up north. We, uh, we went to go look for other filming locations. Found nothing, to be honest. I didn't really know what I was looking for. Um, I thought I was looking for the uh, Spice Harvester location, but it didn't look like that. So, I'm pretty sure that part of the uh, film was filmed like south of Jordan um, yeah I, uh, I landed at Avda to uh, let my hand have a little bit of a break because it was cramping um, and then I went to go visit like a little hole in the ground that I found along this route uh, and it ended up <laughs> ended up dropping frame rates every single time I got close to it. So it wasn't anything I could do about it. I guess I uh, gave up on it because I don't like flying places I can't see. But all in all, this was a really nice flight. Thank you for coming along. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you agree that that's probably the best place. I don't see why you wouldn't. Uh, and I heavily recommend coming out here to fly on your own because it is very, very pretty. Yeah, I actually don't remember where this helicopter is supposed to park. If you want to see any more super famous filming locations, 
Uh, I'll try to find some. Anyways. Bye.